also, I just got my new 140s back in. I was having a hard time stocking these guys last year. But I should have a steady supply of them now. These are a 12 volt polycrystalline uh, panel. They don't get much bigger in a 12 volt panel. Okay, and if you buy the biggest 12 volt panel, then you have the room to grow into 24 volts. Now the, uh, the sun is definitely out. Um, it's only a light haze of clouds, but I do have a power line that actually obstructs the, uh, the panel slightly. There's a bit of a banding down that panel. It's not outrageous, but it is there. And it does sort of throw your numbers a tiny bit, which is why you really don't want to have your panels in a position where they're constantly being shaded. Okay, so looking at that, just straight across the terminals with my ammeter, that's putting out 6.9 amps right now. Open circuit. Okay, you close that against a battery charger and it's going to be a different story. We're sitting at 21.7 and just under 7 amps. Alright, so let's charge your battery. Okay, so this battery's reading 12 volts right now. And it's probably at least 20 amp hours. So that's sitting at 12 volts and I know this battery will, you know, it'll sit at 12.8. Absolutely it will sit at 12.6. Now, when I put it into the charge controller, it's telling me that it's running at 11.7 volts. And that's with the solar panel disconnected. See, I have the ground lead over there. And that slight discrepancy basically is that the solar charge controller loads the battery to a certain extent. I got it running about two minutes ago. And we have the battery charging up. Uh, hovering between 12.2 and 12.3 loaded. A few things happening all at once. The sun's gone behind the clouds. In addition to that, I've got an ammeter hooked up here now. And it's it's float charging because in the in the short time that it's taken me to hook this thing up and get it going here for 20 minutes or whatever this thing's almost nearly charged up so it's it's reaching the top end of things and uh, this battery wasn't as low as I thought it was so you'll see a little pulse PWMO pulse which kind of makes the the uh, DCM there we go see see how it's pulsing that because we're coming up to the point where the battery doesn't need us to be slammed and for that reason a large charge controller like this if there's less than an amp coming off of the panel it'll just shut down it won't even work. It won't even charge batteries. So for example, if you've got 18 volts coming off the sun with one amp of energy, which is basically 18 watts coming off of a 140 watt panel, um, it won't charge your batteries. Which is, you know, seemingly unfortunate, but all these devices have a range of operation. And so you want to match your charge controller with your setup. And this is a complete goofy mismatch because I've got a tiny battery a large charge controller and only one 140 panel. So what you'd really want to have is a minimum of two 140 panels for a charge controller like that and quite a large battery bank, not just a tiny little battery like this. Okay, just to verify what I said, I've disconnected the solar panel. See how the big red leads off? And now I'm just checking the voltage against this so that's why the charge controller is just pulsing small amounts of energy into it because it sees that this battery is you know sitting at 12.8 now that might drop that might you know that's probably going to drop down to 12.5 12.6 and then hold if you look you can see that there's a shadow line on the bottom of that panel Plus, there's a haze in the sky. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll put it up here. But the haze is actually thickest right over the sun right now. So it's a good time to, to show. Now, what consequently happens with a solar panel is you get some pretty, pretty extreme effects. 800 milliamps. So less than one amp. Which is why I'm saying you don't want to use 
a solar charger that kicks out at around an amp, a solar panel like that, you would uh, alone, as in one, you don't need this big 30 amp charger. You'd be far better off to run a 10, 15, or 20 that doesn't have a one amp kick out. So don't rush out and buy a massive charge controller and then say, well, you know, I'll grow into it. You might find that your batteries don't even charge with it. I hooked up the solar panel to a smaller charge controller. That's a 10 amp MPPT charge controller. And that's a relatively inexpensive one. Those are about $60, $70. So now, when, I, uh, when the battery had about 10 or 20 minutes to settle, it indeed settled off to about 12 and a half. And there comes a point where that other charge controller with such a small battery is, it's almost pointless, especially when you're fighting with clouds, one solar panel, that sort of thing. Okay, so now we'll look at this battery. So now it's, it's being delivered uh, a charge and as any charge controller that's its job it won't overcharge so we'll leave that be and uh, probably in another hour or two this will definitely be right up to 12.8 to stay now right now again the, the sun is going in and out of the clouds it's behind a cloud right now and there's a you can see that lower corner is shaded it's amazing how much little things like that will affect it you know if this panel was up on that wall just compared to that little bit of shading right there if it was up there instead that panel will be putting out four times as much energy 